Welcome to the stream. I hope everybody's doing okay on this uh, lovely Friday afternoon. It's uh, overcast and rainy here uh, just outside of Chicago. Um, but what we're going to do today is go over repairing the Creality version 2. Uh, this will also apply to the 2.1 boards. And what we're going to be replacing is this little capacitor right here. This is the C4 cap. So C4 caps on these are, were spec'd out at 100 UF which is too little and they're really low quality capacitors. If they used higher quality capacitors, it might've actually been fine, but they didn't. So this board came in the other day. I figured we already have one for the V112, might as well do one for the 2.0. So let's get started. I'm gonna switch over here and we got our scope set up. Now, if you notice, my scope is all the way up today because I got my reduction lens. So I'm actually able to show you guys what I'm working on without having the camera being in the way. So the things you're gonna to need to fix this are the CR10S cap. Um, I don't have the part number, it's on our site. Uh, it's this little guy, they come in packs of two. I used one on the last stream, which is why I have one left. And you're gonna need some solder. Uh, we're using Kester No Clean flux rosin core solder and this is leaded solder if you are using leaded solder just wash your hands afterwards or if you're really worried about it go ahead and uh wear gloves um i've been handling this stuff for years so uh, if it hasn't screwed me up by now uh i think i'm okay <laughs> um but with that out of the way uh we got a couple different camera views here we got my hand my scope and uh tim's cam which is me hi guys um Chat will not show on this, um, this view, So, but I have chat up in the corner, so I will be monitoring it. So I'm not actually going to be looking at the scope. This is, we've got, like I said, our capacitor here, you can see, and we have our board that we're going to be working on. So what I like to do first to remove the cap, and the cap we're going to be removing is this guy right here. Uh, based on a uh, recommendation from another guy, I picked up a full set of tweezers to help out. So this should make the job a lot better of getting these off. So this is the capacitor that's the culprit of all the temp issues. Now on, now on the boards with this style voltage regulator, this is a 2596 here, um, this guy right here. Um, this one that has the larger text on it is the Chinese knockoff of a 2596 and this one has more issues so but once you replace this capacitor here um, it works just fine so what I like to do is I'll go ahead and obviously clean my solder tip here so I'm just putting it into my little brass brush thing um, and then I'm just applying some solder to the tip to tin it and then cleaning it off again. It just helps with the flow of the solder. So now to get these off, these are surface mount, what I like to do is I'll add a little bit more, I'll heat up the pad, and I'll add just a little bit more solder and kind of rotate this around. And I've got my iron set at 350 Celsius right now. And this is uh, my Hako iron. So I'm just gonna add some on there and you see it kind of flows in. And we're gonna do the same for the other side. And the reason you do this is this helps the soldering iron get its heat transferred into the pads and everything. So it makes it easier to remove. And sometimes it'll take, you know, one or two shots to actually get it to take. There we go. So let's see who we got. What's up, Thomas? Wow, everybody's in here. Joseph Plotner. How's everybody doing? So I'm just going to heat this up and we're just going to rotate this and you want to move it kind of back and forth and hopefully we don't lift the pad. If we do, I'll show you guys how to fix that as well. Um, so we're just going to go ahead here and you'll feel it kind of give way. And what I'll do is I'll rock back and forth. So I get that side lifted up a little bit. Then I'll go here and get the other side. And we'll just repeat till we get this cap off the board. So I'm just let this heat up for a sec. Apply firm pressure with the iron. And there we go. It's starting to come up. Just go back to the other side. I'm just going to kind of walk it off. And we'll see if we lifted the pads. Now see this pad here lifted a little. 
And so I'll show you guys how to fix that because you're like, oh man, this pad lifted. It's not a big deal at all. So in the event that you get a pad that lifts, like right here, these are really cheap boards. Okay, so this pad is, is done for. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to get that off of the board. Now, luckily, right here is this is all connected to the same thing. So what we're going to do is we'll put the we'll put the capacitor on here a little bit offset and then expose this and then we'll replace it. Now, this one did not lift, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and just smooth this one out here and try to remove some of that solder. I'd say it's about a 50-50 shot if the pad lifts on me. Um, it really depends. Some of these boards, they don't. Some of them, they do, but it doesn't matter because we got, that's the ground side, um, if I'm correct. I always, I always forget which is which, but I know which way they go on. So um, I just need to find my caps, which got pushed under here. And let's get you guys back in view. Yeah, so that's the ground side. So uh, since we lifted the pad on this particular one, what I'm going to do is uh, I got a little, see if this little scraper in this toolkit will work. I'm dropping stuff. All right, so I'm just going to expose some of this pad here, or some of the ground plane, I should say. And I'm just lightly scratching this. Now I have tried to use the reflow gun on this, but it just doesn't it just doesn't work and it ends up desoldering other things. So it's easier just to use, you know, like a fine tip iron and you know take your time and know how to fix issues that might come up like this. So there we go, we got the pad tin, so there's our homemade pad right there. I just want to make sure I don't get too much solder on there. Just a nice coating. All right. So what we're going to do is, like we did before, we're going to tin our capacitor leads. Oh, what's up, Hawk? I know you were under the weather. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay. I'm just looking forward to us going on vacation next week. I am exhausted. Man, like I said, just tin your uh, cap leads here. I'm going to use these new fangled uh, tweezers here to hold this guy. Oh, that's so much nicer. These tweezers are clutch. All right, let's put a little bit on here again. Uh, that one took right away, so that's good. And let's just smooth it out there. All right, so now we just need to put this capacitor into place. Now remember, since the pad lifted right here, we're going to offset the capacitor just on a little bit of an angle here. So yeah, um, remember the, the line on your capacitor, so if you guys can see... Um, I can't really see my hand cam that well, so I'll just show you here. So remember, the, the side with the line is your negative, and this is the negative here. You can actually see the silk screen outline shows you which way to orient it on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up so that it's, like I said, slightly offset to go onto that pad we made. And I'm just going to heat the ends and tack it down. And then we'll get it all pr pretty line, like pretty and lined up correctly in a sec here. This is actually harder with the tweezers than with my hand, to be completely honest. Removing it was nice. I'm gonna flow this out a little bit more here, man. This is uh, I gotta get the, I gotta this. You know, Lewis Rossman makes this look so easy when he's soldering, um, and he does really tiny stuff, but it's kind of a pain 
trying to solder and show on stream here at the same time. Okay, so I got the the tab so you can see how I kind of cockeyed the capacitor here, but the negative tab is covering where I made that new pad. So I'm just going to make sure that this goes. And that took there, so I'm going to press this down and apply force and let that solder take. And we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of solder here and press down. And there we go. Oh, I realized that went off cam there. So just press down, apply your heat, and just make sure you don't have too much excess solder there. And that's all there is to it. That's it. So, yeah, the secret is lots of flux. But you can see there, um, I got my pad that I made. It is connected to the capacitor. So that's going to be a good electrical connection. We don't got a cold solder. We got a nice shiny solder there. I am just going to, because I'm anal about this, I am going to hit it again just to make it not as bulky there. So there we go. It looks a little cleaner. But that's all there is to it. So we went ahead and reconnected this. And I always like to go ahead and give it a nice tug. Um, you know, just kind of rock it. Make sure nothing breaks. And this guy is not going anywhere. So this board is now fixed. And it's still going to clear the screw hole here. Um, and if you try doing this and you lift the pad like I, like I just showed you. It's not the end of the world. Just expose a little bit more of the ground plane. Or even on this pad too, there's more of the positive plane there. So... Uh, 16 volts is not too low. These are organic polymer capacitors, and this is 5 volts going through here. So we're way over spec on this. So 16 volt is definitely not too low. Um, the stock capacitor was a 35, but this is a really junky 35. Um, but this is only 5 volts going through this, this here. We do not need... A 35 volt cap. Um, I know some of the older guys that are used to dealing with the electrolytics um, tend to overspec their caps by five times. You don't need to do that with these more modern capacitors. So if you have these new polymer caps, um, you can go up to 80% of their rated voltage. So in this case, it's 16 volts and five is going through here. You're perfectly fine. There's not going to be any problems whatsoever. Um, so that's it. Uh, we're done here. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to an LCD, hook a thermistor up to it and make sure it's fixed and that I didn't break anything else, but I've done, uh, I've done a lot of these. Um, so I can do it a lot quicker if I wasn't trying to show you guys, but that's, that's really all there is to it. Just take your time. Um, and the nice thing about this flux, um, I have, they're over there, but it's a Kester no clean flux. So you can leave it on the board and it's not corrosive. So you don't need to go and clean it or run it through a wash. You can wash it off if you want to, but you don't need to. Um, that's the purpose of this solder. Uh, it is a little more expensive at like $30 a pound. Uh, but I really like how it flows. It flows out really nice. And the no clean flux is great. You can see there wasn't a ton of, uh, smoke coming off when I was actually using it. So I've got to get this out the door and get this packed up for our customer and uh, get it tested before I do all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little stream here and I'm going to go ahead and probably edit this and re-upload it. But I figured, uh, <laughs> I figured that you guys might enjoy to see how this is done. And uh, I'm kind of glad the pad lifted because like I said, it's a 50, 50 shot and it all depends on how much heat you had to apply and force pulling the capacitor off. Uh, but if you lift the pad, it's not the end of the world. Just especially on these particular boards, just expose a little bit more of the um, of you know the positive or neg negative ground plane there, or the positive plane, and just make your own pad. And that's it. So I'm gonna wrap this stream up. Thanks for stopping by, and you guys have a good weekend. And take some time off to enjoy yourselves, okay? There's more to life than 3D printing. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true.